What's going on guys? This is Rob and welcome back to Comics Explained, a YouTube channel where I will make you a comic book expert in 30 minutes or less. And in this video, we are covering Lady Loki or the time Loki became a chick. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is a pretty short run in Loki's history. When I say short, I mean only for a couple years. And a lot of it came out of the events of House of M as well as Thor Ragnarok. So the way this had basically played out is that in the aftermath of our last video, where we essentially talked about Thor dying and the idea that Thor uh, had, had just kind of been removed from the landscape along with the other Asgardians, J. Michael Straczynski took over as the writer of Thor, and man, I gotta say, Thor's hair. Look at Thor's hair on that comic, man. That's some beautiful, luscious locks going on there. Did you guys know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? And so the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. This video is sponsored by Keeps. What is Keeps? Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment for you. Then your treatment ships directly to your door every three months. Now prevention is key here and Keeps treatment typically takes between four to six months to start seeing results. So it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more of those luscious locks you can save. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash comics explain or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash comics explain. But back to our video. J. Michael Straczynski and really even Marvel in a, a, as a larger entity had looked at Loki and come to the realization that Loki's old stories really were pretty bland, right? They really weren't that interesting or that great. And so the desire was to make the character more complex and a lot more interesting, but to also make his plans more nuanced and in a lot of ways more in depth and, and with a little more complication to them. And so what you saw here was kind of this long running plan that began with the return of Loki as a woman and then ran all the way up to the events of what was basically Thor number 600 and the return of Bor, the father of Odin, right? So the way this played out is you essentially had Thor kind of returning back to life and then coming to the realization that he was the only Asgardian to basically come back. Now, he had kind of met with his alter ego, Donald Blake, and Donald Blake's response was kind of like, hey, like, it's your job to find everyone. And Thor had come to this realization that the Asgardians, their essences, their spirits were still alive, but they had been inhabited or placed inside the bodies of other people, which was really a way for Marvel to kind of reference the old Donald Blake concept, right? And so what ended up happening here, really, I would say in the first six issues, uh, is that you basically had Thor traveling around from location to location and basically waking up the various Asgardians who existed out there. Now, the first person to wake up was Heimdall, just because of the fact that he needed the eyes of Heimdall to be able to know who, you know, where the various people were. Otherwise, he'd have to literally travel based on hearsay and conjecture, right? Like a person did some crazy thing in this town. Okay, that might be the Warriors 3, right? Instead of having to do that, he actually had Heimdall to essentially point him in the direction of the various people who were there. Now, in issue number five of Straczynski's run, he ended up traveling to what was basically a, a kind of prison of sorts where various humans had kind of been gathered together and then held as prisoners by the destroyer armor. Now, when Thor got there, what you ended up having was him trying to really wake up Sif only to find out that Loki had inhabited the body that was meant for Sif. And that's why Loki appears as a woman. But following that, it was a, an interesting concept because Loki immediately went to Baldur the Brave, who's kind of this member of the Asgardian royal family and really kind of throws out this idea that he's kind of seen the error of his ways, right? He's basically a good guy now, that he's kind of been born anew and then his physical form is a reflection of that. Now, again, this was kind of the beginning of this sort of long running campaign and pretty much everybody bought it, right? It was one of those things because of the standing that Baldur has among the Asgardians. If Baldur believes in a person, the other Asgardians will as well. And a lot of people actually believe more in Baldur than they do in Thor. They follow Thor because he's the king of Asgard and he protects them. But if they have to make the choice of who they believe is the most honest or the most honorable, a lot of them would choose Baldur, right? Because he is in a lot of ways so incredibly pure when it comes to his character in the Marvel mythos. Um, you did see a couple schemes here and there, but one of the most notable came during the Dark Reign event. Now, the Dark Reign event was really a product that came in the aftermath of the events of Secret Invasion, right? Now, most of you guys know about Secret Invasion, or if you have kind of a passing glance of it, all that it really happened here is it came out of the Illuminati storyline, right? Where you had like Charles Xavier, you had Reed Richards, you had a handful of people who were kind of operating behind the scenes and monitoring the various threats on Earth, and it essentially traveled to the Scroll homeworld following the Creed Scroll War and because of how close it came to Earth. And they essentially issued an ultimatum to the 
the to the scroll empire never to come back to earth again what it what it did is it led to the scrolls essentially knocking out the various members of the illuminati and then copying their dna and then just kind of using it for some future campaign that may or may never come to fruition what ended up happening following that is you saw galactus destroy the world of the scrolls and so the scrolls hunting for a new home world began to secretly invade the planet earth and when they did that they started copying the various superheroes who existed out there and then replacing them with scroll duplicates and that's the entirety of the secret invasion storyline more or less what was going on now at the end of the secret invasion storyline norman osborne who was uh, essentially just kind of a you know ran his own company and we know him as a green goblin largely a villain intercepted information that would end the war and he successfully did it following that the u.s government looked at tony stark who had been the director of shield following the events of civil war and found themselves asking the question how did you not see this coming and so because they saw it as just a, a, a incredible display of ineptitude they ultimately kicked him out as director of shield and replaced him with norman osborne following that norman osborne immediately disbanded shield and then reformed it as an extension of his company hammer and then in turn started bringing in villains and so that's one of the things that you saw lady loki do was actually become part of norman osborne's cabal now following that in thor issue number 600 where we had talked about the the last video that we did where loki had gone into the past to essentially solidify his own existence by basically destroying boar's physical body and leaving his essence stuck in the snow that loki traveled to that exact location and brought boar back but when he did boar had come to this realization that odin was not the one who returned him and believing the only way in which that would happen is if odin died began to go on a warpath this was exacerbated by the fact that loki had cast a spell that had driven boar to see everybody as an enemy and so over the course of issue number 600 you literally see boar the father of odin just going on this warpath and attacking everything in sight ultimately thor catches up to boar and then because of boar's rampage and the strength he possesses not realizing that he's actually the father of odin ends up destroying boar and so the result of this is that when lady loki goes to balder she kind of asks the question in sort of a hint hint nudge nudge kind of fashion if thor killed the former king of asgard even if he's not the king anymore then didn't he technically kill a member of the royal family and that's punishable by death and banishment and the response of of balder was yes and so ultimately thor's banished from asgard now following that and as part of norman osborne's cabal uh lady loki actually ended up bringing asgard directly to dr doom or at least intending to bring the asgardians directly to dr doom in the kingdom of latveria but with thor and and really his alternate persona donald blake still being banished uh, loki intended to return back to the normal form that loki was supposed to operate just because of the fact that this was kind of the conclusion of the first phase of loki's plan and so one of the things that goes on here is that you kind of go into the mighty avengers as it was written at the time by dan slott now dan slott's mighty avengers and even really just the mighty avengers themselves were largely predicated on the events of civil war right so the way that works and it was a, a genius move by marvel to launch it because the avengers were already so popular at the time but the way this worked is that you essentially had the traditional avengers team and the avengers team in a lot of ways had been disbanded leading up to the events of civil war but then of course you had like the new avengers that had kind of been reformed in the aftermath uh, of the elimination of the original avengers team but the, the issue you had is that once civil war kicked out uh, the entire superhuman community was just split down the middle and so the new avengers were by all standards of measurement defunct and so what remained of the new avengers were basically those who were loyal to tony stark with captain america having his own secret avengers and those who stood against tony stark and so with the the very really with tony stark and hank pym and reed richards ultimately coming out on top in the sense that superhuman registration basically won out when captain america essentially surrendered at the end of the civil war conflict uh, that you ended up having the creation of the mighty avengers who were was basically a, a carol danvers led superhero team that traveled around and tracked those individuals and snatched them up uh, if they had not adequately registered what dan slot did here is he essentially had lady loki take on the form of uh, of the scarlet witch who had basically been missing in the aftermath of the events of house of m and then create her own avengers team and this was really done for the purpose of trying to find a way to defeat cathone who had essentially awoken in wonder gore mountain now the idea was that cathone took the body of quicksilver in an effort to kind of race around the world as fast as he could and influence the world as fast as possible with loki pretending to be the scarlet witch launching her own campaign to kind of stand against cathone so i wouldn't go as far as to say this was loki being a hero but i will go as far as to say it was loki doing at least something good right something decent now ultimately this all came to a head uh when you ended up having cassie lang who was the daughter of scott lang and who at the time was technically part of the young avengers and the team in the aftermath of the children's crusade storyline ended up summoning uh, scarlet witch directly to them and when they did the disguise of loki was basically removed right and so loki was ultimately defeated and that was basically it what you ended up getting was kind of loki going back into his normal male form and then returning back as the cabal or part of the cabal of norman osborne and that's when you go into the events of siege on asgard now siege 
Siege on Asgard was a storyline that basically saw Thor uh, kind of abandoning this notion that he had been banished from Asgard when you ended up having uh, Norman Osborn and his forces, the Dark Avengers, and even some of the Dark X-Men launching an attack against Asgard itself. And the reason behind this was that Asgard was one of the last holdouts, right? That when you had uh, the Dark Reign event happening and you had things like the X-Men leaving Westchester and moving to Utopia, which was an island off the coast of San Francisco, that technically they were not part of the United States. So there wasn't really anything that Norman Osborn could do with them. But uh, in the aftermath of Ragnarok and during J. Michael Straczynski's run, that Asgard had been restored in Broxton, Oklahoma and just hovering about a foot off the ground or something like that. And so because of the fact that it occupied space in the United States itself, it was really the only thing that Norman Osborn needed to launch an attack against it under the idea that they were standing against registration and against the desire of S.H.I.E.L.D. to kind of continue its charter or at least S.H.I.E.L.D. as it existed under Norman Osborn. And so what you saw was the Sentry who had essentially given in to the power of the Void, his evil persona, along with a handful of other Dark Avengers all attacking Asgard. Because of the power that the Sentry had, Loki didn't realize what he was getting into, right? He basically underestimated the power of the Sentry. And ultimately, Loki did the only thing he could do, which was to summon the Norn Stones and then use those to help the Avengers as best he possibly could, but then was killed by the Sentry, who was essentially powered by the Void. In that moment, Loki basically died. Now, the funny thing about this is that Loki had initially gone to Hela and had his name removed from the Book of Hell, which is essentially kind of this giant book that basically has the names of those individuals who travel to that realm when they die. And so because his name wasn't in there, essentially his soul could not be collected. And the idea was that he would essentially have himself reborn into a new form, which would come in the form of Kid Loki. The funny thing about this is that doesn't happen, right? Well, Kid Loki technically does appear, but it's a wholly different beast. So again, Lady Loki is a pretty small moment in the history of Thor's mythos, but it's still an interesting concept nonetheless. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.